as we continue our get to know the Denver Broncos 2022 rookie draft class, we take a look at the Broncos fifth round selections. Yes, three players in round five for this Denver Broncos football team. Plus, what are some important dates that Broncos fans need to know about OTAs, mandatory minicamp and rookie minicamp and expectations for these fifth round players? Well, you get all that and much more in today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back here to a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team. Every day from the South Stands to the End Zone, I'm your host, as always, Cody Work, Broncos beat reporter for Mile High Sports, joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. He covers the Denver Broncos for Predominantly Orange and here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. Thank you once again, Broncos country, for making us your first listen of the day every single day, whether it's free and available everywhere you get your podcast and audio format or here on YouTube. Make sure you smash that like button and do us a favor make sure you smash that subscribe to that follow button on your favorite podcast and providers over here on youtube so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver broncos news content coverage all year long we have you covered hey sarah great to see you again my friend hey the broncos offseason continues here otas is currently ongoing and there's a multitude of things i think broncos fans want to know like when is mandatory minicamp when is rookie minicamp well we're going to break that all down here today plus we're going to continue our get to know series here for these broncos rookies I love it, Cody. Great to see you as always. And yes, I mean, Broncos football is not going anywhere anytime soon. I know the players will get some time off there in June, but before you know it, I mean, after all these OTAs go by and everything, Cody, it's it's going to be training camp before we know it. So I think let's just buckle in here because that that first season of Russell Wilson under under center for the Denver Broncos is almost here. I mean, I, I know it's May right now, but it's going to feel like August is going to be here before we know it. And and so I'm excited to break this all down. It gets started this week, Cody, with the rookies reporting for minicamp. Oh, I'm excited about that, too. On Friday and Saturday, Broncos rookies will report to the UC Health Training Center and maybe the Pat Bowen Field House to participate in a rookie minicamp where they get up to speed. They're going to get acclimated a little bit on the process of becoming a Denver Bronco. And I'm excited about everything that's going to come into that. I think that there may be some veteran players that could show up. I'm not sure if they're allowed to at this point. I'll have to double check on that, Sarah. But I imagine Russell Wilson, if in fact is able to, I think he'll be there to throw to receivers. A lot of these young guys that are probably going to get acclimated uh, on this Broncos offense and on the defensive side of the ball. I'm excited to see if any veterans show up there. But one thing that stands out about the Broncos offseason program so far, Sarah, when we talk about OTAs, this is a glaring statistic because guess what? It isn't mandatory. This is voluntary. 100% attendance in the in Dove Valley. I think that is a perfect statistic there. I think it speaks volumes. Obviously, a new head coach being in the building, and obviously with Russell Wilson, like players, even the ones that maybe you know are still recovering, like guys who are still injured, are showing up and they're being there. They're getting those mental reps. So it continues on here this week. There, so here's some off-season workouts that will obviously continue on through May, leading up to mandatory uh, training camp. That will lead up to mandatory minicamp, and then players will have time off, and then they'll be back for training camp. But May 23rd and May 24th is when things are going to continue for the Broncos veteran players. May 26th, they'll also come back. They'll have a few days off. They'll report back from May 31st through June 1st, and then they'll have a day off, and then they'll come back on June 3rd, and then they'll go June 6th and 7th, and then they'll have a couple days off, and then they'll report for June 9th through 10th before having a couple days off, and then Sarah reporting for mandatory minicamp on June 13th through the 15th. There's going to be a lot of storylines that I think we're going to keep our eyes on. Like, for example, KJ Hamler, he, you know, we've seen him in uniform. We've seen him wearing a helmet. Obviously, there's no contact, but he's out there. He's running routes. He's catching passes. That is a very promising sign. I know that's something that we're going to be following specifically here this offseason throughout training camp. It is, and there's big storylines like that, and there's smaller ones. You mentioned Russell Wilson potentially throwing to these guys. One interesting story, Cody, is a player that's getting just a tryout for the Denver Broncos during rookie minicamp. I hope I'm saying his name right here. His name is Eric Barriere. 
the Walter Payton Award winning quarterback out of Eastern Washington. Super random acquisition by the Broncos and not even officially signed. He's just been, been invited to the rookie minicamp. So I think that's kind of cool. That award has been won by a lot of really big time NFL players. Now a lot of high draft picks. I'm pretty sure Cooper Cup won it back in the yeah. day. Maybe it may have even been at Eastern Washington if yep. I'm remembering right. So uh, Trey Lance won it recently. So the Walter Payton Award winner uh, quarterback is coming to the Broncos rookie minicamp. But then obviously after that rookie mini camp is when things really start to ramp up. Like you mentioned, I mean, you get into the meat of OTAs, which takes us into almost mid June or really mid June. And then they take a month off for training camp roughly. So I, there's a lot of things to be looking forward to Cody. I know that you and I are going to be talking about this over the course of the next couple months here and just breaking down every individual player on this roster, but it really starts at this time of year. You know, you hear guys talk about that all the time in the NFL. It starts back in, you know, OTAs, it starts back in May or it starts back in April when you're lifting weights, really when you're building that championship culture that you want to have everybody really gravitate towards in the locker room. And so I think, like you said, 100 percent attendance is going to be the key. Obviously, there's some guys in Denver that may have some contract situations going on. Draymond Jones, Bradley Chubb being a couple of them. But at the same time, I, I feel like everybody's kind of just gearing up. You want to impress the new head coach. You want to impress the new coordinators. You want to impress Russell Wilson. You want to impress the new owner that's going to be coming in. There's so much to follow here in the next couple months for the Denver Broncos. It is such a drastic time right now. If you're a Denver Broncos fan, you have so much to look forward to, and there's so many questions. You just mentioned the ownership situation. We're all the waiting to see what happens with that, and obviously some of the candidates are coming in. They're taking a tour of the facility, meeting executive members that are on the Broncos organization, the, the roster, the coaching staff, whatever maybe They're going through, and they're making their rounds there, uh, and so I'm very eager to see how that all turns out, and when we have an update on that, we'll provide it here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast, but coming up here in just a moment, we're going to get to know the person and the player, yes, three of the Broncos' fifth-round rookie draft selections in the 2022 NFL Draft. We get to know them coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about BetOnline.net, the sponsor of today's episode of Lockdown Broncos. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting stats and information. You can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including the basketball playoffs that are ongoing right now and Major League Baseball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information and live betting to playoffs esports and more all at betonline.net and you can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action bet online where the game starts as we jump into the second half action on today's episode of Lockdown Broncos, once again, Broncos country, mile high salute to you. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. Sarah Bettinger and myself, we appreciate you so much, Broncos country. Thank you for always being involved in what we do here on the show. This show is for you in Broncos country, so we appreciate it so much. Sarah, one thing that we've gotten great feedback on is our Getting to Know You series getting to know some of these Broncos rookies, what they're interested in, some of the personal life information that isn't too intrusive that's out there on the public web, just the stuff that makes them who they are beyond just being a football player, which I think is super important. And then we'll talk about the football player side of things, but let's get to know Delarian Turner Yale safety out of Oklahoma. And yes, that's how you pronounce his first name. Despite the spelling, it is Delarian Turner Yale. For those of you that are interested, obviously, you know, for the Broncos, they're going to come out with the pronunciation guide in their upcoming media book. That's going to drop here in July. But Sarah, obviously the safety from Oklahoma picked in round five from George Payton back to back years going with a safety in round number five for him, you know, for the football player side of things, there's a lot to be excited about, but he has some, interesting background as well that could translate well for when we get to interact with him in the media and even maybe after football he could be involved in some administrative side of things whether it be in football whether it be in a you know a business an NBA whatever it may be he's got a lot of options on the table here he does a human relations major in college and somebody who's obviously got a lot of responsibilities out there on the field. I mean, just watching Oklahoma, we get to see two defensive players that the Broncos just drafted. When you turn on the Oklahoma games from the past couple of years, obviously Nick Benito, the team's top pick, but then Delarian Turner yell. And it looks like Delarin should be his name, but it's Delarian. So for those that listen to locked on Broncos, you're going to know how to pronounce this guy's name when everybody else is calling him Delarin. And so I just know Delarian, not the DeLorean, Cody, who are not going back in time here, but we're talking about <laughs> Delarian Turner Yell, a second team, all big 12 selection at the safety position. 
And to me, Cody, when I watched Oklahoma and, and there was a few games that he missed this past season, he was injured for a handful of games due to an injury. And, and I don't know exactly the nature of that injury, but I do know that the defense for Oklahoma was vastly different when he wasn't on the field for them. I mean, he, he made a huge difference. So in his 10 games this past season, four passes broken up, three interceptions, which led Oklahoma's defense two and a half tackles for loss on top of his 52 total tackles. So really productive guy, really productive player on the back end. And we heard the Broncos scout talk about this selection when it was made saying, hey, we really like his ability to play center field. But I think you see like we talked about this right after the draft. I think you see a little bit of that Kareem Jackson in him as well. Yeah, and going back to several years throughout his career at Oklahoma, he has had a tendency to miss some games, and I think it's just because of the way that he plays. Like he's very, as we say, Kareem Jackson like. Like he is a heat seeking missile, and sometimes I think he puts his body on the line a little too hard. Sometimes I know that just you know he'll get coached with proper technique coming up here in the NFL level because you have to be much more disciplined at the NFL level. And I think having a guy to learn from like Kareem Jackson, who maybe kind of represents how he plays his game a little bit, I think will pay dividends for him. But let's talk about Montrell Washington, the wide receiver, kick return, punt return specialist out of Sanford. Now, a lot of Broncos fans are like, why did the Broncos make this pick? And I think that outside of not knowing a little bit about who he is, I mean, you can see on the football field, you can see on the tape, why this guy plays with a bigger chip on his shoulder than anybody else. Now, Montreal Washington here, he started playing football at the age of four years old, and he said that he fell in love with it from that very moment. So football has been very ingrained in him. And I think one thing that stands out too, a lot of people had just assumed from his freshman year, his sophomore year, that he was just this return specialist. Well, in his junior season, he approached the coaching staff and he approached with this mentality of that season, his junior year saying, hey, I don't want to be just known as a return specialist. I want to prove that I can contribute on the offensive side of the ball. So from that point forward, he became an all-purpose freak from kick returns, rushing yards, receiving yards. He was a big-time threat here for Sanford at that position. And obviously, we all know about the Florida game, Sarah. Florida was an absolute dog of a game. But what's even more impressive about Montreal Washington in this game is that he played in that game and had the performance of his life playing with three broken ribs. I can't even imagine doing that. Obviously, this guy's very, very tough for his size, and I imagine he might be exactly what the Broncos are looking for when we talk about that tough Bronco culture. He, he really is, and he replaces, obviously, Deontay Spencer, who we had kind of talked about. You need some some something from this guy on offense, whoever comes in to be the return specialist. I don't, I don't care if it was you know, a gadget player. I don't care if it's as a receiver or a running back or whatever, but you needed somebody that could actually contribute to your offense. And yeah, watching that Florida game, especially given the context of a rib injury, is extremely impressive. I mean, he basically single-handedly, he kind of forced the Florida Gators to score 70 points to beat Samford in that game. I mean, you just go back and watch the game. If you don't believe us, go back and watch it. This isn't pumping up a prospect just for the sake of doing it. I mean, he, he single-handedly goes out there and forces Florida to score 70 points because he's scoring every which way. He scored as a runner. He scored as a receiver. He scored as a returner. And I think that's exactly the, the type of you know impact the Broncos want from him. And more than just being a super fast guy, Cody, to me, he's an instinctive returner. That return yeah. touchdown that he had against Florida, I mean, he's working through a lot of traffic to finally get by all those defenders and get into the open field. It's not like he just saw a crease and utilized like a 4-2-40 uh, type of speed to get through it. So really good stuff from him. I like this pick. I'm very intrigued by it because I don't think anybody really had him on the radar coming into this draft. There may have been a few analysts out there that evaluated like 400 prospects or more, but I, I, I wasn't one of them. So I had no idea who he was coming into this, but I really like what I've seen so far. Well, I think one thing for him, too, I think he has the perfect makeup and, and football DNA in a sense for what the Broncos want offensively, right? I think everyone's going to be monitoring K.J. Hamler. You know, how is he feeling coming off of an ACL injury? Will he face any limitations opening up the season? And But also, like, he, it's a great insurance policy. If something does happen to K.J. and K.J. is not quite ready just yet, which is okay. Like, as athletes recover from ACLs, it takes time. It's a mental journey as long as physical. What we see is very promising, but you never know. There could be setbacks along the way. We hope that doesn't happen. But I think the Broncos could also use Montreal Washington in that KJ Hamler type role if need be. And as you mentioned, maybe some gadget plays. They can be very creative with how they use him. And I think that's a great thing for the Broncos offense to have is that explosive creativity. And as we've seen, Nathaniel Hackett, he loves to embrace those opportunities when they present themselves. 
But let's talk about another guy here, Luke Wattenberg, the Broncos offensive lineman selection. He's center. He's played a tackle at the early parts of his career at Washington and guard, and he was drafted in the fifth round. Now, this is an interesting thing that I don't think many Broncos fans know about Wattenberg, and I was very surprised to hear this myself. He actually played six years of college football. He was at the Washington program for six years, so he's very seasoned. He's ahead of the curve, I think, when we talk about a lot of those instances. And I also think that the COVID year – uh, you know, made it to where he could come back and play another season because obviously college football players in that season, it wasn't quite the experience they were hoping for. And that's why this year in the 2022 NFL draft class, we saw a lot of older guys come out. So I, he might have a little bit of an advantage coming into this team here. That was something I found very interesting about him in the draft process. Yeah, you certainly would think so just because he's going to be 25 sooner than later. He's a he's an older prospect and that's okay. I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong with drafting older guys. I mean, especially offensive linemen, it feels like they can kind of play a little bit later than normal. Almost like quarterback age, which seems it seems like counterintuitive or like that doesn't make sense because offensive linemen they they play such a physical position, right? You would think that they would have a much shorter uh, you know, lifespan for lack of a better term in the NFL, but obviously Luke Wattenberg, a multi-position player amidst some concerns that, Hey, could the Broncos be going a different direction at center? Could they be going a different direction at left guard? Because I think right now we feel like Quinn Miners is pretty much a lock to be the starter at the right guard position. And then the right tackle position we assume is going to be Billy Turner. Maybe, uh, maybe Calvin Anderson wins that job. We'll see. But then how does that affect the left guard position where does Dalton Reisner really have a solidified spot there? I think that's going to be fascinating to see Cody over the course of these next couple of months, as well as Lloyd Cushenberry at center, because we know he's struggled a little bit throughout the start of his NFL career. So you have to be, I think with those two guys, you have to be really, really sure that, okay, we're, we're getting an upgrade at the position to pull them out of their respective positions, left guard and center. But I think that there's an option for that to be there now with Luke Wattenberg, the Broncos. Again, I'll mention this, that George Payton has traded up for two guys. He traded up last year for Javante Williams and he traded up in 2022 for Luke Wattenberg. So I, I don't know what that necessarily says. You can make that what you will. It was, yes, he traded up like eight spots in the fifth round, but still it was a trade up nonetheless. And so they got their guy and he's a super athletic dude who can play a number of positions for you. Really long arms, Cody, for an interior lineman. Obviously he has the experience at tackle, but some intriguing traits for sure. Well, he did mention in an interview too, leading up in the NFL draft process, he mentioned that, you know, in college moving to center was great for him. And because it became his favorite position to play, like he loves hiking the football to the quarterback. So I, I think there's a lot of opportunities that we can investigate here with Luke Wattenberg, as obviously he begins his journey with the Denver Broncos. And we take a look, rookie minicamp begins Friday and Saturday of this week. And we'll have coverage here, lockdown Broncos. Some of the recap of that is some of these rookies get welcomed into the national football league. But what are some of these real, Realistic expectations for these fifth round picks heading into 2022. Sarah Bettinger and myself, we're going to break that down and share our thoughts coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode. Show it's a good friends over there at Built Bar. And Built Bar is the home run draft selection for you if you love protein bars that are healthy and taste just like a candy bar. Built Bar offers nine amazing original flavors plus the occasional limited time flavor and the new exclusive Built Granola Bars. There's three exclusive flavors that you can find and try out today at Built Dot com And the thing I love about Bill Bar, they give you a little bit of extra push to get you through your day because each bar contains 17 grams of protein, 130 calories, and only 4 grams of sugar. That is tremendous value for something that's covered in 100% milk chocolate and tastes just like a candy bar. And I want you and your family to get your hands on a box of Bill Bar here today by going to built.com. And when you go to checkout, make sure you use promo code LOCK15, and that's going to get you 15% off your next order at built.com. <laughs> As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, once again, Broncos country, thank you so much for making the Lockdown Broncos podcast your first listen of the day every single day. When you wake up in the morning, you go to the gym, you make breakfast, you're getting ready for your day, you're on your drive to work. We appreciate you so much for tuning in, listening to us, or watching us here on YouTube. It means the world to us as well. Sarah, let's get to talking about some of these realistic expectations for some of these rookies, because I think a lot of times people look at NFL draft classes and they automatically envision, okay, hey, this is the premier role for this player. This is why this player was drafted. 
it could be the reality there, but I imagine that there's always a timeline associated with each of these picks and maybe how they're used that you could see a couple of fifth round picks used right away, or you may see them seldom used in the first couple of years of their career outside of special teams. I want to start things off with Turner Yale here. Obviously the safety out of, out of Oklahoma. I look at this Broncos safety room right now, Sarah. It's pretty loaded. The Broncos have a bunch of dudes there, especially with Justin Simmons. No one's ever taken Justin Simmons off the football field. So we have to ignore the possibility about him playing that center field position the way that Justin does. However, I think, you know, beyond Kareem Jackson's return, you have Caden Stearns there. You still have Jamar Johnson. You bring in J.R. Reed as well in the offseason. And now you add Turner Yale to the mix. The Broncos is really investing in having a lot of back-end safety depth, which, as obviously the rumors have been talked about, they plan to play a lot of dime and nickel this season. You need a lot of dudes at that position, probably more so than you need defensive linemen, which you know poses a bunch of questions for the Broncos in and of itself. But you know, your thoughts here on Turner Yale, maybe how he might fit in here in 2022. Well, I was I was pretty surprised to see them go with a safety, Cody. Honestly, Me too. I, mean, I think I think it was just uh, with you mentioned J.R. Reed as well, which I think that's one of those additions this offseason that kind of has gone completely beyond the the radar. I mean, it's, it's so far outside the radar that I don't think anybody even remembers that he's on the team, but the Broncos did bring him in in free agency and they have Caden Stearns. They have Jamar Johnson. Obviously you have Simmons and you brought back Kareem Jackson and PJ Locke and yep. all these other guys. And so it's just like, well, where does Turner Yell really fit into this mix? I think that obviously you must like, number one, his ability to contribute on special teams. That must be something that they like about him. We know he's fast. He's got some good speed. So I, I think that's the number one way any of these guys are going to make the team this season beyond those top two. Obviously, Kareem Jackson, Justin Simmons are making the team. I think Caden Stern's probably a lock to make the team. So who's going to be safety four and maybe safety five? You know, I think that's where Turner Yell really fits in. And is he going to overtake Jamar Johnson? A lot of guys that were, you know, he, a lot of people were excited about him last year, right? As a fifth round pick, kind of felt like the Broncos maybe got him two rounds later than they should have. But now is he kind of on the outside looking in? So I think with Turner Yell, the expectation is you got to be able to compete on special teams and you got to be able to play right away if you're going to make this squad. Well, that leads us right into Montreal, Washington. Now, Sarah, I envision him. He could be a day one starter for the Broncos as a kick returner and punt returner. But, you know, I think for him and training camp, and this is always a great thing about having a 90-man roster, you have a lot of competition. There's going to be a ton of guys vying for that return job. And there's also the reality, too, like for guys that are more focused on playing the defensive side of the ball or offense, like some of these guys may not want to be a return option. Like I can tell you, there's some guys in the NFL, and I think there's just some guys in the game of football as well, who simply don't want to be the guy that has the pressure of standing back there and having to look up and feel the punt while hoping not to get blasted by a gunner. I, there's some guys that love that, though, and I think Montreal Washington is a guy that obviously when we look at the college tape, he loved returning kicks. He loved returning punts. So I don't think that's going to be an issue for him at the NFL level. I think he's going to welcome that challenge, but there will be a lot of guys I think that he'll be competing against. He'll be competing against Tyree Cleveland, who we know Dwayne Stukes has already name-dropped, and we know Dwayne Stukes doesn't name-drop people very often. So, uh, you know, your thoughts on Montreal Washington. I mean, obviously, I think a big thing for him, one of the keys in training camp, you got to protect the football. Can't be dropping it, and I I think that's one way that we could see whether or not he'll be ready for the task. Right. You got to hold on to the ball. You got to be able to catch it. That was the one primary reason. I think that everyone was so excited about Deontay Spencer back in the day. Finally, somebody that can catch a punt out there. So obviously for Montreal, Washington, you got to be able to go out there and you got to be able to catch it first and foremost. But can you be dynamic then? after you catch the punt or after you catch the kickoff. And like you said, there's going to be plenty of other competition alongside him for that position. I mean, Jalen Virgil, an undrafted guy. I think yeah. we've talked about him before. Big time speed and big time returnability. And they're not alone. There's a couple of other guys on this uh, undrafted free agent class that the Broncos brought in that can return kicks, can return punts. So I, I don't think that job is a given by any means. You got to go out there and you got to make sure you earn it. But that's going to be his number one role right away. Barring, like you said, with the recovery time of KJ Hamler, that could play a factor in this. But I think with, for Montreal, Washington, his surest bet at seeing playing time early is going to be being the best kickoff and punt returner on the Denver Broncos roster. Well, let's talk about Luke Wattenberg. I think his story, I think, has a chance to rise very quickly, Sarah. You know, I think his vast experience at the college football level, I think it could propel him into an early role, potentially in 2022. Mm -hmm. But if not, I imagine 2023 might be a very key year for him. I think that the Broncos and George Payton are evaluating this very closely. 
From what we gather here, Lloyd Cushingberry and Graham Glasgow, they'll be competing for the center position at training camp. That's been something that's been rumored to be in the works there. So ideally, it's going to be one or two of those guys inside this season here in 2022. The Broncos have an easy out, you know, with Graham's contract after 2022. Lloyd Cushingberry, they can make the decision to kind of demote him a little bit. And this is an opportunity for Luke Wattenberg to maybe step up into the mix a little bit. How do you anticipate this going for Wattenberg, and, and what do you see? Because I think that he, there's been a lot of praise for him going back to his time at Washington. Obviously, everyone talks about Greg Dulcich's hair on the Broncos rookie class. A lot of people are talking about his hair. Wattenberg's hair had the best hair on the Washington Huskies offensive line there. It was one thing that stood out about you know what his coaches had said outside of his dominant play at their center position. Trench warfare is going to be very important. I think for a guy like Russell Wilson, you need to have solidarity at the center position. That relationship is so important. And I think if Wattenberg can get off to a great start early on, I think it bodes well for his chances in the future. It does, and you got to be able to get off to a hot start because, like you said, you want to know who's playing that position right away. I mean, we've already seen Lloyd Cushenberry's already been snapping to Russell Wilson out at their workouts that they did in San Diego. So. That's something that I think you need to get that that chemistry on the same page. Like I remember Peyton Manning and Matt Paradis, they worked for a long time to get that chemistry down. So I would love to see if Luke Wattenberg is the guy. I would love to see that decision come down sooner rather than later. You know, just to say, okay, after after seeing all of OTAs, after seeing the rookie camp, you know, we really feel good. Like like he's going to be a starter in the NFL and that could allow you to even potentially trade one of these guys too. If that's the, if that's what you want to do, if you want to roll with Wattenberg as the starting center and you feel like you have a capable backup and you trade the third guy, I think that there's a possibility that that could happen. And, and I know the Broncos are pretty deep on the offensive line right now. Like a lot of people are, are complaining about the state of the offensive tackle position and the fact that the Broncos didn't go after one in the draft. And it's like, I, I feel like they have 10 guys right now on the offensive line that should be on the roster opening day. And I don't know if you keep 10, I don't know if you keep yeah. you do that. So uh, a nine is probably the threshold there. So I think that Wattenberg obviously has to prove right away being that he's an older rookie as well. I mean, he's got to prove like, you don't need a ton of work. You don't need a ton of this, a ton of that. Like we feel like we can put you in right away. He certainly has the athletic profile to be able to do it. He certainly has the experience at the college level to be able to do it. So as a fifth round pick, I mean, should the expectation be early starter for him? I feel like, you know, you don't draft a guy necessarily just, just for depth. I feel like you draft them so that they can play. And if Wattenberg is a guy that you feel like he can play, and get him into the lineup soon. Well, Broncos country, we're eager for your thoughts. What do you think about DeLorean, Turner, Yale, Montreal, Washington, and Luke Wattenberg? What are your expectations for them as a member of Broncos country? Make sure you comment that down below in the YouTube comment section. Also, make sure you smash that like button here on the video and comment for the algorithm as well. But that'll wrap up today's episode of the show. Broncos country, throughout this week, we're going to continue our player-specific, coach-specific episodes where we talk about our expectations for these players heading into the 2022 NFL season. Not only that, sprinkled in with some NFL OTA news and notes as it pertains to your Denver Broncos. You get that here and much more on the Lockdown Broncos podcast both Sarah Benninger and myself. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day.